Hey fellas, me Trapper here. And today I'm going to do a review on the Wilderness Systems Pongo 140 Sit Inside Kayak. So stay tuned. <laughs> First, some numbers. The boat is 14 feet long, it weighs 58 pounds, and it has a capacity of 350 pounds. The deck height is 13 inches, the cockpit length is 57 inches long, and the cockpit width is 22 inches wide. With this boat, you get the added speed and storage of a touring kayak, but with a very spacious cockpit. This boat is ideal. For larger paddlers. Now the Pungo 140 has two hatches, one on the bow, one on the stern. The bow hatch is the smaller of the two hatches and the stern hatch is the larger of the two hatches. As you can see these are not just cheap simple uh, holes cut in the hull with a rubber cover. Uh, these are reinforced openings and they have a locking mechanism. This design is important because over time, these hatches are not going to warp or lose their shape. Now, these hatches are also watertight. As you can see with the bulkhead here, this is sealed with uh, silicon. And so far, after several months of use, I have experienced zero leakage. The Pongo also has fully adjustable foot pegs, and as you can see, the adjustment is extremely simple. You simply reach down, grab the lever on the right, and either push it or pull it to the desired location and release it, and that's it. Very quick, very simple. This boat also has, on the side of its cockpit, some built-in braces. This is where you can rest your thigh and you can push against each side of the boat to lean it one way or the other to help in steering. Now one of my favorite features of the cockpit is the seat. This has absolutely the most comfortable and the most adjustable seat that I've ever used in a kayak. Not only can you adjust the angle of the backrest forwards or backwards uh, as you desire, but you can angle the height of the backrest either down or up depending upon what fits best with your life jacket. Also, you can raise the portion of the seat that's under your knees up or down by pulling on the handle. Uh, what this does is this supports um, the portion of your leg under your knee and over time, over a long trip, this really helps out and makes it amazingly comfortable. I absolutely love this seat. It's the most adjustable and form-fitting seat that I've ever used in a kayak. Now, as I mentioned earlier, the cockpit is an oversized cockpit that's ideal for larger paddlers. Or, if you're the type that paddles with a buddy, you have plenty of room. Now, when I was considering buying my next kayak, um, there are a lot of reviews on YouTube that show you all the hatches, um, you know, all the foot pegs, they tell you how long it is, how much it weighs, all that sort of thing. But that didn't really answer the question as to whether or not this was the right boat for me. Um, pictures uh, and, and features and, and specifications only go so far. What I think is a lot more valuable and what I want to share with you is my thought process in buying the boat and what I've found since I've, I've owned it. And basically try to help you decide if you're in the market for a kayak, is this a good kayak for you or not? The first thing is, this is a long boat, uh, comparatively speaking. It's 14 feet long. And what that means is, in, in kayaks, the longer the boat, the faster it's going to go um, when you paddle. So a 14-foot boat is going to go faster than a 12-foot boat, and a 12-foot boat is going to go faster than a 10-foot boat. So this boat is very fast. The second... Um, Thing when looking at the size and shape of the boat is the width. The wider your kayak, the more stable it is. And so if you go really wide, you can get a, a kayak that you can stand up on, walk around on, and all of that. But when you go that wide, it's going to be hard to paddle. Uh, so the greater the width, the more stable it is, but the slower it's going to be to paddle. 
And so you can see that if you have a short, wide boat, uh, it's going to be stable but slow. And if you have a long, skinny boat, it's going to be a little less stable, but it's going to be faster. So you have to decide which is more important to you, stability or speed. Now, I've been kayaking all my life, uh, whitewater kayaking, flatwater kayaking, touring, you name it. Um, this boat is incredibly fast for its size. This boat will give a lot of sea kayaks a run for its money. My top speed paddling this boat uh, is six miles an hour. Now that is extremely fast for paddling, six miles an hour. Now I couldn't sustain that. I was paddling pretty hard, but um, a, a rate of two and a half or three miles an hour is very easy to maintain in this boat. What's interesting is my wife took a group of friends out and uh, they had rental kayaks and she was immediately blown away by how much faster and easier to paddle this boat was than the rental kayaks that the other other girls had. So why did I purchase this boat? Um, this boat for me is my long-range kayak camping boat. Uh, this is not a boat to trap out of uh, or anything like that. This is not a boat to take to the beach. There are a lot of times when I get on these rivers around here that I want to paddle um, 10, 12, 15 miles in a day. And I don't want to be exhausted at the end of that day. I still want to have energy to fish and have a good time when I get there. Uh, that's something that I can very easily do in this boat. Uh, I love this boat. This boat is stable enough to where you would have to work to flip it over. It's extremely fast. Uh, it sheds the wind very, very well. Uh, which is important if you get out on big water and you get caught, caught in a, a crosswind or what have you. Uh, the hatches work extremely well. Uh, they're very watertight. Uh, as long as I'm not trying to carry barbecue grills and, and all of this kind of crap, uh, the storage is adequate. Uh, when I'm going camping in this boat, I pack like a lightweight backpacker and I have no problems whatsoever. Uh, it doesn't weight the boat down, it doesn't destroy the speed and, the, and all of that. Now, one thing about this boat, this boat, like I say, is 14 feet long. It likes to go in a straight line. That's important to understand because when I'm out paddling in open water, I don't want a boat that's constantly going back and forth and back and forth. I want a boat that's going to track straight. That requires less energy and less effort to keep it on course. This boat does an outstanding job of tracking straight. The downside to that is if I were on a twisty, turny creek and there were a lot of rocks or a lot of logs and I was having to go around stuff and back and forth and pick my way through, uh, this would not be a good boat for that. Uh, this boat likes to go straight and it takes effort to make it twist and turn. So you have to sort of think about what your uses are in a boat uh, and where you're going to be using it. Uh, and what you value. Do you value speed? Do you value stability? Uh, do you want something that's going to track straight or are you going to be in tight conditions and terrain where you're constantly uh, dodging stuff? The other thing uh, that's interesting about this boat is the cockpit is huge and I think that's very important. Uh, as I've gotten older uh, I'm not as uh, flexible and I'm not as nimble as I used to be. This big open con cockpit to me is a godsend. It, it's so easy to get in and out of. Now this boat comes with a plastic center console that fits on top. And at first glance, that looks like a really great idea. You're like, oh, it's got a drink holder, it's got some storage, and it puts everything right there uh, where it's easy to get to. And that's true. But the problem is, is that it destroys the big open cockpit and it makes it uh, a lot more difficult to get in and out of. And so, after bringing the boat home, I used the cockpit once. I took it off and I've never put it back on again. And the interesting thing is, is the guy at the um, uh, boat shop where I bought the boat, Fairhope Boat Company, uh, he paddles this boat and he told me the same thing. He said, here's your, con he, he, it was funny because I, when I was buying the boat, he goes, here's your console if you want it. And I was thinking, yeah, of course I want it. And now I can see, yeah, you, you know, if somebody took it and threw it in the garbage, I wouldn't, I wouldn't care. Uh, I've, I've never used it. So to me, this boat sells for about $1,000 depending upon uh, where you buy it. Uh, it's not a common boat. I had to look around, I had to call around, and I had to travel to go pick it up and buy it. Um, after having used this boat for a couple of months now, I have absolutely zero 
regrets about buying it. And uh, that's when you know you've bought something useful, is when you have no regrets and you're as happy today as the day that you brought it home. So, if you're looking for a long-range touring boat that will allow you to cover a lot of miles uh, very quickly with very little energy, uh, that's easy to get in, easy to get out of, that tracks straight, um, and has adequate storage, this is an outstanding boat, and I think you would do well to purchase it. Uh, Wilderness Systems Pungo 140. Um, I love it. This is a great boat. Uh, if you have any questions, put them below. I'll do my best to answer, and I hope this review has been useful. And I hope it uh, sort of steers you down the right road of uh, what kind of boat you need and uh, the kind of things to think about. Uh, because, like I say, looking at reviews, there was just an endless, an endless list of, yay, this boat is great, yeah, this is a good boat, uh, this boat weighs X number of pounds, it's, it's not tippy. That didn't really help me. That didn't help me filter, filter through everything and decide which, which boat I needed and, and was it worth the money. So hopefully this will do that. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.